Good day viewers and subscribers. Welcome to my channel. This is another video about the Vibes Cartel case of appeal. We are puzzled too. Justice is hearing Vibes Cartel's appeal in shock as new evidence raises concerns. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on air and online at onespotmedia.com. I'm Archibald Gordon. And I'm Doreen Samuels. Also this evening, Blue Hole Mystery. Tourists sick, some dead. The popular St. Anne attraction blamed. Health crisis looms. St. Anne residents turn to dirty pond for water. More seizures. Sea talk steps up offensive against counterfeit goods. Up in blaze. Fire God's Long Pond Sugar Factory. And in business news, don't throw it out. The Bank of Jamaica goes after millions in coins. There's also sports, sports commentary and weather in the primetime package. But before the break, the feedback question. This evening we're asking, should persons applying for certain posts in government be required to declare past convictions? Give, Give reasons for your answers. Share comments online, facebook.com slash television Jamaica and tweet at television jam. Please stay with us. Primetime News returns after this break. Welcome back to Primetime News. Special welcome to folks on OneSmartMedia.com. Up first this evening, a discrepancy in relation to the time of one of the damning text messages used to convict dancehall entertainer Vibes Cartel of murder has sent, has left rather, the judges hearing his appeal puzzled. One of the defense attorneys in the case revealed the anomaly as the first day of the hearing of the entertainer's appeal got underway. The three-member panel, Court of Appeal President Dennis Morrison, Justice Patrick Brooks and Justice Frank Williams is presiding over the matter. TVJ's Vashon Brown was in court today. This is one of the text messages reportedly taken from one of Vibes Cartel's mobile phones. Between me and you, a chapu chap up the boy lizard fine fine and dash him way now. As long as you leave them can never find him. Today attorney at law representing Sean Campbell Bianca Samuels told the court that the phone's metadata showed that the text message was created on July 6, 2011, six weeks before prosecutors claim Williams was killed. What that reveals, because the past tense is used in the text message, so what that reveals obviously is that there was some tampering and, and usage of the phone to create a text message somehow that came before that was prophetic in some way as to the death or alleged death rather of Clive Williams. Miss Samuel says this left her puzzled. The three member panel also seemed puzzled. President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Dennis Marson, said our silence was sharing in your puzzlement. Miss Samuels also argued that there were multiple unexplained usage of the phone. During the trial, defense lawyers argued that three calls were made on the phone while it was in the custody of the police. The forensic expert who testified at the trial said he did not authorize anyone to use the phone. Miss Samuels today argued that prosecutors failed to prove the integrity of the phone. The key which was supposed to close the locker which the phone was supposed to be held in was simply left on top of the locker and anyone could have had use or, or could, have, could have been privy to use of that specific locker. The cell phone, which included a number of damaging pieces of evidence relied on by the Crown, should not have been given to the jury for their consideration based on the law. Now the other matter raised in court today was prosecutorial misconduct. Lawyers raised concern that the jury was allowed to deliberate despite the court hearing that one juror was trying to bribe other members of the jury panel. The director of public prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, was under scrutiny. Attorney at law Bert Samuels, who is representing Sean Campbell, accused the DPP of aiding and abetting an attempt to pervert the course of justice. It was brought to the attention that a man sought to bribe the jury. The learned DPP said the judge should keep him and just give the normal warning. Don't refer to the fact of any bribe and just let him deliberate. And at the same time, the same evening, she took statements and sought to have him charged for perverting the course of justice. So the net result is you knowingly cause a man who is perverting the course of justice to sit on a trial for a citizen of Jamaica when he's a briber and then you seek to try him in half a tree thereafter if that is not prosecutorial misconduct. The Court of Appeal ruled last week that it will accept new pieces of evidence in the case. The three-member panel heard some of the new evidence today. That round we won last Monday has borne fruit today because we now have before the court a statement by Mr. Chow, the star witness, that he reached Solofield at 8 o'clock in the night. 
and that, you know, in his testimony, he reached between 5 and 5.30 during August. The public knows that 5, 5.30 in August is broad daylight. Cartel is appealing the life sentence imposed on him in 2014 for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. Three other men, Sean Campbell, Andre St. John and Kaira Jones, were also convicted for the murder. The appeal continues tomorrow. Vashon Brown, TVJ News. Two visitors to the island are dead and several more are recovering after being diagnosed with leptospirosis. The people all point to a popular attraction, Blue Hole in St. Anne, as being the source for their health issues. But is it? TVJ's Janella Pursuits has been following that story and has the first of a two-part series on the Blue Hole mystery. Dunn's River Falls or the Blue Hole. Nowadays, an increasing number of visitors to the island are flocking to the latter. According to the reviews online, they see the Blue Hole as less touristy. The lure, one visitor remarked, is that it's a more relaxed environment and it gives more of a feel of being in Jamaica. It's perhaps why in February, this group of 18 from Maryland, USA, journeyed miles to Thatch Hill Orcherias, where the popular tourist attraction is located. This is what the Blue Hole looks like on a regular day, but they arrived to murky waters due to rain. So I really didn't think much of it. I asked the guy that we paid to, to go in that, it, you know, if it was safe and he said, yeah, it was fine. So I luckily had a brand new white bathing suit on, so I didn't want to swim in it. But, uh, you know, most of the men jumped in and, and swam in it and had a great time. The tour guide carried them through the various routines like jumping from ropes into the water. The thrill of the experience ended, however, days after they returned to the U.S. All nine men swam. Um, out of our group, there was six that, that, that ended up getting sick. The water from the Blue Hole flows into the White River. It's where the less adventurous visitors come to play. Robert Kunz and his wife were there in November. Not long after returning home from their vacation, he was hospitalized. What they realized his kidneys were um, failing, his liver and his lungs. Of course, the lungs is what started it all when he uh, stopped being, when he wasn't able to breathe. Ultimately, they had to put him under sedation because he started coughing up, like he started suffocating. And it was at that point that they realized something was not right. Uh, I mean, like majorly wrong, something was not right. So they had to intubate him and put him under a medically induced coma in which he was in for 16 days. They've only been married for about a month now, but a newlywed wife is praying her husband makes it out of a medically induced coma alive. Days after this story was aired in December 2017, Chris McCannage died. Dead too is Canadian Ben Warford. His family says he visited the Blue Hole in January this year. By the second week of him being back, he wasn't feeling well. Within four days, he had visited the ER three times. The third time that he went in, is the time they kept him. He, at that point, he was coughing up blood. He could barely hold his head up. He was extremely jaundiced and he, he physically could barely hold himself up. He died on February 22. Medical documents all confirmed that the victims contracted leptospirosis. According to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, the disease is spread mainly by contact with water or soil contaminated by the urine of infected animals. Persons can get the disease by swimming or wading in fresh, unchlorinated water contaminated with animal urine or by coming into contact with wet soil or plants contaminated with animal urine. In humans, it can cause a wide range of symptoms, some of which may be mistaken for other diseases. He was acting like he had the flu, tired, um, wanting to rest, body aches, fever. Um, he had a high fever, um, bad headache, um, that type of thing. Um, and they said that it was the flu. Another common factor is that when they visited the Blue Hole, the water was murky. This hasn't stopped hundreds of visitors from taking a dive, as we found out when we visited the attraction recently. But is it safe? We continue to explore the issue in part two of our series. Janela Precious, TVJ News.